President Biden said Friday that he would visit the site of the Baltimore bridge collapse because, like that bridge, Biden is no longer connecting with black communities. <laughs> You got to read the polls. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the fresh wave of polling out last month. It shows that the Biden campaign is losing support from voters of color in a presidential race that is going to be so, so close. The panel rejoins. Um, Ron uh, Brownstein, I, I want to talk to you about this because your new piece on CNN.com really digs into this question mm -hmm. that the Biden campaign has about how they are losing ground and how much ground they are losing with non-white voters. What have you learned and what, what are they paying attention to? What do we need to be paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, the racial dynamics in this race uh, could be unprecedented and they are certainly fascinating. Donald Trump at this point is polling not only better than he did in 2020 among both black and Hispanic voters, he's polling better, Casey, than any Republican presidential nominee since the civil rights era. Uh, you know, in the routinely getting in the 20s now in polls, uh, both nationally and in the key states among black voters and around 45 among Hispanic voters. And all of that has understandably received a lot of attention. The other side of the racial ledger, though, has received, I think, uh, surprisingly little attention, which is that Joe Biden at this point is matching or even slightly exceeding his 2020 number among white voters in virtually all national uh, and swing state polls. And if Biden can, in fact, maintain that support, it kind of flips the central issue in this uh, in this campaign. It I think it really becomes whether Donald Trump all the way through November can defend these beachheads in black and Hispanic communities while running on such a racially polarizing agenda with ideas like mass deportation, internment camps, unilateral military action against Mexico, ending diversity and inclusion efforts, and pardoning the white supremacists who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Right now, he's getting the best of both worlds. He's energizing his socially conservative base we were talking about in the last segment with a lot of these very racially tinged polarizing ideas. And he's winning an historic number of uh, non-white voters, primarily around other issues like inflation and the economy. If he can maintain that tightrope all the way to November, very hard to beat. If Democrats can push him off that tightrope, the race could look very different, given that Biden, somewhat surprisingly, I think, is basically where he was among white voters when he won in 2020. Hmm, interesting. Ron, for people who, I mean, you pointed out all of the ways and places, or many of them, why some people might kind of scratch their heads about why these voters might be willing to uh, back Trump. And I do think there's certainly some frustration when I talk to uh, people in these communities who get lumped together as people of color. I mean, Hispanic communities, there's all kinds of different gr groups of people across the country. Obviously, black communities ha have something uh, similar than you lump those people together, right? We don't want to do that. Um, but when you kind of pull these pieces apart, why is it that many Hispanic voters seem to be willing to go with Donald Trump and then separately black voters? Like, how do you explain why this is happening? Well, there are long term trends and there are short term trends. There's no question that uh, voters of color have been increasingly subject to the same realignment along educational lines uh, that has reshaped political you know, allegiances in the white community for 50 years. At least for the last decade, we have been seeing that, especially among men, uh, with Republicans gaining and Trump gaining among non-college, non-white men, uh, obviously not to the same degree that they do among non-college white men, but a kind of along the same trajectory. But I think the proximate cause of what we are talking about uh, is inflation and the sense among uh, many voters living at or around the median income or below the median income uh, that life is just more of a squeeze than it was from what they remember the early years of the Trump presidency. I mean, one Democratic pollster said to me that the nightmare phrase, that's his phrase, that, that, he, that he hears in focus groups all the time is, I, I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like what he says. I think he's a racist. But if I'm being honest, I had more money in my pocket at the end of the week when he was president. That is a serious problem for Democrats. But it is also true that there is very little awareness in the states that count uh, um, in, in, in communities of color about the kind of things that I mentioned before, you know, mass deportation, yeah. military against Mexico, uh, ending all uh, diversity and inclusion 
uh, efforts. Um, and Demo you know, the question will be, I think Trump is likely to run better than he did in 2020 among black and brown voters. The question is, can he run as well as he is running today? And what's that kind of break point that Biden has to roll him back to in order to regain the initiative, particularly in those Rust Belt states. So I do think there is a there's a question yeah. out there for Trump as as Democrats and their allies make these voters more aware of, of these polarizing ideas that he's putting forward and also try to draw an economic populist contrast with things like the tax bill and uh, the Affordable Care Act. Can he sustain what he's doing, because it's not a nice to have at this point, Casey, because of what's happening among white voters, it's a need to have for Trump. I mean, he kind of needs to run better than any Republican ever uh, among non-white voters. And we'll see if he can sustain that all the way through November. There's reason for him to be optimistic. There's reason for Democrats to believe they have an opportunity. New reporting this morning on how President Biden's campaign is focused on reaching out to black voters, a vital block that could help decide the presidential election. Black voter turnout, particularly among black men, has dropped over the last decade. There is a big effort by Democrats to reverse that trend ahead of the November election. CNN's Isaac Dovier is joining us now uh, from Washington. Uh, there is a primary that's coming up in Wisconsin tomorrow. I is that going to be a place where, where they'll sort of look to see if some of the work they've been trying to do is out? actually having an impact. Yeah, it's a primary tomorrow. It's also local elections in a bunch of places around the state. And that is where they've been road testing a lot of things in Wisconsin uh, to see about uh, changing up this outreach to black voters. I was there a week ago looking at some of the things going on there. Remember, Wisconsin is a state that went to Donald Trump for, by 21,000 votes in 2016 to by 23,000 votes to Joe Biden in 2020. It is going to likely be a very close state. And black voter turnout is a huge part of that. That, especially in and around Milwaukee. Uh, the Biden campaign is looking at a lot of ways that they can try to reach out to black voters. Again, as you mentioned, this is not just about getting people to vote for Biden or Trump. This is about getting people to vote at all. Black voter turnout has been a, in a real uh, decline over the last uh, couple of elections, and black men especially, a huge focus for the campaign to get them to show up for President Biden, to connect with what he's been doing, and to be there in November when they think that they will need those votes to win the state. Isaac Dovier, thank you so much for your reporting, John. There's an interesting twist on in all of that. New this morning, Axios reports that if Donald Trump wins the election, there are plans to focus the Justice Department on what they call anti-white racism. As Axios puts it, this would be an attempt to radically alter the government's interpretation of civil rights laws. With me, the host of The Big Deal with Errol Lewis on Spectrum News, CNN contributor Errol Lewis and senior politics reporter for Axios, Eugene Scott. And, and Eugene, let's start with you. This is Axios reporting this morning. Anti-white racism will be a major focus of a new Trump Justice Department? It will. Uh, there have been a number of organizations, Trump-aligned organizations, such as America First Legal, headed by a former Trump aide Stephen Miller, that have gained traction over the last few years, be it quietly, in trying to overturn a number of policies and programs that they believe discriminate against white people. This is, should be viewed as a continuation of the Supreme Court's overturning of affirmative action. And one of the things they really are hoping to do is attack landmark legislation like the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and just get it removed or at least make it prioritize white people who feel like they've been discriminated against. Pretty interesting in the context of what Isaac was just reporting. Errol, that, that President Biden is trying to reach out to black voters who, you know, may be leaning toward maybe not voting, but here you go with the Trump Justice Department focusing on whites? Yeah, well, look, the Republican Party, the Republican candidate, Donald Trump, got 8% of the black vote four years ago. It sounds like they're writing the script for that to be repeated. Uh, there have been a couple of outlier polls suggesting that Trump might get 23% of the black vote, that sort of a thing. Uh, but I think some of your reporting and some of what we've seen in past elections suggest that they're going to revert to type, that they're going to be divisive, that they're going to uh, try and uh, polarize the electorate organize white voters and try and pull out one more victory that way. It's a it's a risky and in some ways undignified uh, strategy, but it sounds like that's what the, the Trump folks are prepared to do. Is this just a policy plan, Eugene, or does the Trump campaign plan to highlight that this is something that they would do if he's elected again? 
Well, I think they're going to be more vocal about it as the election moves on, as the campaign moves on. The reality is the main strategy that we've seen from the Trump campaign right now is to lean in, hope, hopefully turning out their base. And the reality is that this is a concern of many of the voters in their base. It's not obviously a huge concern of people outside of their base and swing voters who they need to attract if they're going to be successful in a number of states. And so how they're going to figure out a way to communicate this and keep the people they need to turn out without alienating the people who would be offended by this remains to be seen.